What's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Vala. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look on how to use G settings and save the user's options related to our app. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable and affordable VPS in the cloud, SkySilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. So in order to understand G settings, you need to understand that every time you edit an app or you update something or you change the settings inside some application in Linux, those settings that then you reopen your application are stored inside the G settings, which are accessible through the glib library. The G settings allows your application to save certain stateful information in the form of booleans, string and arrays. Let me give you an example. So if, for example, we trigger our application, so I access the build folder and I trigger Jarvis, it's gonna open at the center of my monitor. This is the center of my monitor because I have a 4K monitor, so it's here. Then I move it around, I resize it, I use my application, blah, 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 whatever I wanna do. Then I close it. If I reopen it immediately, it will go back to the initial state, what it was before. But this shouldn't happen, this is a mistake. The application should remember the custom setting that I specify, the custom sizing, the location on my screen, if it's a dark theme or whatever. And this is really easy to implement and I can show you because I have it in SQL. For example, if I open SQL, I resize it, super small, and I make it dark, then I close it. If I reopen it, it will reopen it exactly in the same spot with the same settings. And of course, if, if I resize it back and I put a light and I close it again and I reopen it, it will reopen in the exact same location. This is because every time I close my window, I update the G settings in my system to then refresh my application when it triggers again, when it gets open again, to revert back to the initial state or the latest state that the application was before getting shut down. So. Let's implement it. First of all, we need to define our G settings schema, which is a simple XML file that we can write inside a new folder. So if we create a new folder, we call it data. Inside this data, we can create a new empty file, which we can name simply G schema.xml. If we open here, we open the G schema. Perfect, the code editor recognizes this is an XML syntax, wonderful. Now here we can write the usual header, which is references the XML version 1.0 with an encoding of UTF-8, pretty standard. Now we need to follow this strict list. If we don't follow the strict ordering and markups, it won't work. So let's be careful and hopefully I'm not gonna make any typos. So let's write schema list and then let's close the schema list, perfect. Now indented, let's open the schema and let's close it also, perfect. And now we can define some option for the schema. This is where all our keys, all our unique variables will be stored. So here first we need to specify the path of our schema and the path is a reverse path representing the name, the unique ID of our application. Our application is com, GitHub dot alicad, which is my name, dot Jarvis. This has to be converted into a reverse path. So we can start with forward slash com, forward slash GitHub, forward slash alicad, forward slash Jarvis, and then final forward slash. This is the path that resembles only our application and it's done in order to not get confused with other G schema paths, which we don't wanna interfere with. The other option that we have to specify in the schema markup is the ID and the ID has to be exactly identical to our application name. So once again, com github dot alicad dot Jarvis, perfect. Now in here, we can list all our keys and for now I'm gonna list just four keys, the position, of my window, so I need the coordinate X and Y, and then the size of my window, so I need the width and the height. Let's do it. Let's define a key markup with a unique name that we're gonna call, for example, pos-x, that stands for position X, and then the type, we need to specify if this is an array, it's a boolean, it's a string, or an int integer. Since it's a number, we need to specify it as an integer, so we have to set i as type, then we can close 
the key. And inside this key, we can define three options. We need to define the default value of this key, the summary of this key, so the kind of like the title, the name, and what it summarizes, a small excerpt of what this key is, and then a lengthy description of this key. This is really important because we're gonna see where these G schema settings will be saved in our system and how we can read them properly. So let's define the default which let's say position, I want to open these at 360. And then the summary, we can say horizontal position, something like that. And then the description can be something more lengthy that we wanna be more accurate. So something like the saved horizontal position of our window, something like that, pretty, pretty standard. Now we can duplicate this key because of course I don't want to rewrite everything and I can put it down and I can set the Y location. And also in this case, I can leave it at 360. It's fine, but instead of horizontal, I'll change it to vertical. This is an integer as well. Then we want to save the window height and the window width. Let's duplicate once again this key and let's say, let's call it window dash width and it's an integer as well. And we can give it a 600, let's say window width and the save width of a window, perfect. And then let's duplicate once again the window and this is gonna be height and the 600 by, let's make 600 by 400. And this is the height as well. Let's update the description and the summary. Perfect. We created our G schema list. That was pretty straightforward. Now we need to save these into our system. In order to do that, we need to update the Mason build and let Mason be aware that we have a G schema that needs to be saved in our schema directory. So of course, like we did when we created a source subfolder where we created a Mason build in the source subfolder, we can create a Mason build file in the data subfolder create a new empty file, let's call it meson.build. And this file is a meson file, perfect. And inside here, we need to use a method of meson called install underscore data. This method will simply install some data in our settings. What we have to install, we need to first specify the location of the file that we want to install. So in our case, it's the gschema.xml, which is in the same directory that our meson file is, pretty straightforward. Then we need to specify as a second parameter, the install underscore directory. So there of where we want to install the G schema. And here we need to join the paths of our directory and get the global option that represents our data directory. Basically this global option automatically will get the proper location of our data directory in our system. We don't have to manually specify, uh, I don't know, something like etc uh, slash user slash data, whatever is in the data directory. I never remember where the G setting schema are safe, but this option will automatically grab it for us. And then we can specify that these G settings will be saved as glib with the version 2.0 in the schema location. And as a last parameter, we need to rename the file. The, the file needs to be renamed with the same name of our project. As we specify in the G schema, this is the name of our project, the name of our file, but we don't wanna repeat it here because as we are doing here, we define the project name and in the source folder here in our Mason, we are tapping that project name by simply using the Mason global variable, whatever global class available, and we call the project name. So let's copy Mason project name. Inside here, we wanna rename this file to Mason project name, and then concatenate it with a plus symbol to the .gschema.xml. So we're gonna rename our file into something like com.github.alegad.jarvis.gschema.xml and Mason will do it for ourselves. That's it. The last thing that we have to do is of course, tell the base file Mason. We need to include another subdirectory. So let's duplicate this and let's include the data 
subdirectory. The last thing that we have to do before testing it, we need to write a small Python script in order to refresh and compiling the G settings. Because by doing this, yes, the Mason file that we created here will install the G settings in our directory, but our operating system will not automatically refresh the G settings. We have to force the refresh of the G settings, otherwise they won't be available. So let's create a new folder inside our base directory called Mason. And inside here, we're gonna install, or actually we're gonna create a little script called um, post underscore install dot pi. It stands for Python. So this is a Python file with a pi extension. Fantastic. And this can be kind of frightening, kind of confusing, but it's actually pretty straightforward. So first let's write a little comment. It says user bin environment is Python 3 we need to import a bunch of things. So we need to import the OS and we import the sub process of the OS. And I'm not an expert in Python. So some things that I'm doing probably they don't make sense or it doesn't make sense how we'll explain it. But this is the basic concept of this little script. So we need to check and we need to define a variable that is the installation prefix. And we can grab it by tapping the OS, the operating system, and then tapping the environmental variables of the operating system that it's called mason underscore install underscore prefix. Now that we have this, we can tap the schema dir or define a variable that is the schema dir. And once again, we tap the OS, we check the path and we join in the same way that we were doing in Python, the install prefix that we just defined and we put it inside the shared location of the glib 2.0 of our system in the schemas, plural schemas folder. Perfect. And also remember just here, I noticed I did a little typo. I wrote before schema is plural, is schemas. Just remember this, it's just the location of the folder it has to be schemas, just be careful. In this post install, now that we have our install prefix and the schema dir, we can check if we're not in a destination directory of our operating system, we can trigger a sub processor of our OS in order to compile the schemas for us. So we can do a, just a simple condition, if not OS environ dot get the dest dir variable if this is false, we can print something in the terminal so we can let the user know or us know that we are compiling the G settings schemas, dot, 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 something like that. So we know what's happening in the terminal. And then we can simply trigger the sub process, this one that we imported and we never use. We can trigger the sub process and call in the sub process the inside the square brackets, the glib compile schemas, and we need to pass where this sub process should act, where is our G schema that needs to be compiled in the schema dir directory. That's it. That's what we have to do. And Python doesn't have any semicolon at the end, doesn't have any special character. It's all about indentation. So once we do that in our default Mason file, where we define the subdirectory that is tapping the data folder, we need to also say that, hey, Mason, after we compile everything and after we trigger the install, add an installation script. So underscore add underscore install underscore script. The installation script, we need to simply specify the location of our post underscore install dot Python script. Now we're good to go. If we actually compile once again, Ninja, everything is green. We have everything installed. It's recognized also the post install. So now we can run sudo Ninja install. And I have a typo is path, not PT. So post install is path. Great. Let's type again, sudo Ninja install. Wonderful. We have our compiling G-setting scheme and print. That's perfect. After this, we can access our window and update these settings. So in the construct, we can say that let's define a new variable called settings. 
and this new variable is going to be equal to new glib dot settings and we need to specify the name of our project then in our case as a string is com dot github dot alica dot Jarvis, that is the same name that we specify in our G setting schema, always matches the name. Remember this. Now that we have this name, we can trigger some update methods when the application is generated. So we can say when the window is contracted, we can use the method move, which will move, literally move the window in the position that we want. And then we can say in the settings, glib settings, we can get the integer that matches whatever we specified for our pos x. And the same thing, we can duplicate because as a second parameter, of course, accepts the position y. So now we're uh, tapping the settings, we're generating a new glib settings that it's tapping the name of what we created, and we're using the stored position that we have of position x and y in order to move this window in the position that we want. So if we try to trigger this, and once again, we generate Ninja, there's no error, but if we trigger our application source forward slash GitHub Allegat Jarvis, look where it happened. It opens right here in this little corner. It doesn't open at the center anymore because we're moving to 360 and 360 position. Fantastic. And if we want to check where our G setting schema were safe, we can open our application drawer and open the dconf editor that automatically was installed when we installed the elementary SDK. Inside this dconf editor, you basically have access to all the settings that all your application have installed inside your operating system when you actually install an application. So here, if we go inside com, GitHub, look at that. These are all the elementary US application. If we access Alicad, we have Akira, Jarvis, Sequeler. Oh, Jarvis is here. If we access Jarvis, we have all the settings that we specified. The position, X and Y, the window height and window width. So for example, if I want this to be position 600 and I save this, now if I trigger once again my application, it's a position 600. So if I put, for example, at 1200, it should appear here, right? Let's try again. Position 1200. So it's the double. Let's trigger it. Boom, right here. Phenomenal. So this was uh, kind of like a weird introduction about G schemas, but it will get really straightforward once we start getting into it. In the next lesson, we're going to see how to streamline a little bit the usage of the G settings thanks to the Granite library and how we can update the G setting schema of our application whenever something happened before closing the window or uh, updating something specific. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.